Growing up as a young indigenous and queer girl, I never really saw myself represented in anything. I always felt like my people, my identity, my community was being erased. Being a young native girl, I was always fighting for some kind of voice and some kind of representation. It was seeing Jordan and Marie Daniel that finally gave me the courage to do something bigger. Hello, my name is Rosalie Fish, and I introduced myself in the traditional Holshutsi language of the tribes in Washington. I'm from the Muckleshoot Reservation in Auburn, and I'm enrolled in the Cowlitz tribes. In 2019, when I was a senior at the Muckleshoot Tribal High School, I witnessed an article by Indian Country Today that featured Jordan Brings Three White Horses Daniel, who ran in the 2019 Boston Marathon as a member of the Lakota tribe to represent the missing and murdered indigenous women crisis. She did this by painting a red handprint over her mouth along with the letters MMIW down one of her legs. This very much impacted me because growing up on the Muckleshoot Reservation, the missing and murdered indigenous woman crisis is something that impacts not only my family, but my community as a whole. And it was something I always felt powerless towards. When I saw Jordan use her running platform on the professional level to bring awareness towards this crisis, it made me feel hopeful and it made me feel like someone saw me. The first time in high school when I ran with the paint for missing and murdered indigenous women, it was very heavy. The very first race at my state championships, I dedicated to my aunt, Alice Looney, who went missing in Wapato in 2004 and was found deceased 15 months later. And so when I raced the mile for my aunt and I won it at state championships, and I remember a reporter came up to congratulate me on being a state champion. And all I really wanted to say to him was to leave me alone because state championships, uh, competition in general, it felt so insignificant to the issue and to the lives that I was representing. I have very strong emotional ties to Washington State. One of the main appeals to transferring to the University of Washington and the first thing that I brought up to Marisa was that I wanted to represent the 29 tribes in Washington. I wanted to show other kids from my tribal school and other kids from tribal schools around Washington that we absolutely deserve to have a place in collegiate sports. When she arrived here on campus, we all knew about her cause, but we didn't really fully understand how connected she is to it personally and I think learning more about how this cause has really impacted her personal life and the people really close to her has been like, pretty eye-opening for all of us. Rosalie has grown tremendously since she's been here. I do think she found pretty quickly that she does belong here and that she is just as talented as everybody in the room and her work ethic is extraordinary. She's just the kind of person that if you go somewhere, she's gonna be like, oh, text me when you get home safely. She checks in on us. There's a type of unconditional positive regard for everyone on our team. My teammates and my coach are always there to support me and to help me be the best version of myself that I'm able to be that day. We're really guided by our university's core values and our program's core values, and Rosalie embodies all of them. I mean, her resilience and her ability to just continue to grow and continue to try to get better in everything that she does is inspiring to all of us. She's demonstrating to everyone on our team that by leaning in and accepting that things are going to be hard and that she's in a position to make a big difference, it's, it is really inspiring to everybody that we can all be better versions of ourselves. I hope more people are inspired to use running as a platform, use sports as a platform. I'm really grateful that she's part of our team and I'm really excited to see what's next for her definitely on the track. Watch out for her. The University of Washington Women's Cross Country Program is one of the biggest cross country programs I've ever been on. 
yet I've never felt more included in any other team uh, than I have before. In high school, I was on a team of one, and um, to be on a team of about 20 girls, and yet still feel like I can go to any of these girls whenever I need something, and vice versa, like to create this environment, I feel really grateful to be a part of it. I think if you're not interested in being in the spotlight or being the center of attention, there's lots of ways athletes can get involved in preventing violence. The SASHA, the Student Athletes Against Sexual Harassment and Assault, is a group here on campus that focuses on prevention, on consent training, and these are ways that we as athletes can uh, hold ourselves accountable to creating a safer campus environment. We're very, very, very lucky to have Rosalie here, and I feel fortunate every day that she's impacting our program in the way that she has, and I just Truly, I hope that we can give her as much as she's giving us. I'm hoping for anyone who watches this episode and relates with the feeling of not being seen or feeling invisible, that you begin to feel value in your own voice and your own perspective if you haven't already, because your voice is very powerful. <laughs>